Hey there, it's Heather Hakes. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing with you a seven-step process to detox and declutter your mind and your life. Before we dive into today's lesson, I want to offer you a free video training on how to reprogram your subconscious mind. You can grab it in the description box below and also directly on my website, heatherhakes.com. On my own personal development journey, I have done a lot of things to declutter my mind and my life. And today I want to share with you a seven-step process you can implement and apply to your life to detox your mind and declutter your life. These are different steps and processes that I have implemented over the years, and I am telling you, they have been a game changer, and I want to help you too to live more positively and mindfully and intentionally. Most importantly, I truly want you to know that your mind is the cause of every effect in your life. When you declutter your mind and you detox negativity, people, thoughts, beliefs, and habits from your life, everything is going to change for you. So stay Step number one in this declutter process, this idea of detoxing your mind in your life is to stop watching the news. I stopped, I gave up the news years ago because truly there's nothing on the news that is bettering your life. It's it, News makes money from headlines and fear mongering. So literally, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, but step number one to declutter your mind and your life, stop watching the news. Step number two, and this is a big one, and it might take you a little bit of time, but I highly recommend on your social media platforms and your email inbox, it is time to unfollow and unsubscribe from anything that doesn't make you feel good. The email inbox was a big one for me, but I, I started unsubscribing from newsletters and, and mail promos and things that were just junking up my inbox. The next big one I did is I unfollowed and I am extremely intentional with all content that I am consuming. So step number two, unfollow all social media platforms, people, and subscription services that are no longer serving you. All right, step number three. Now, this is one that definitely took me some time at first, but once I got her under control, I... It is a sense of peace and clarity that I feel every single day. And I'm talking about your email inbox. I have multiple email accounts, I think like at least five. But what I did, again, from step number two, that unfollow and unsubscribing, every single day I get my email inbox down to zero every single day because otherwise it really is an attention grabber right all these to do's so if you intentionally take time out of your day whether you need to sit down and, and you check email twice a day or whatever it is i highly recommend doing whatever you need to do to get your email inbox down to zero Step number four. Now I hear from people time and time again that, you know, time management's a big problem in their life. And maybe you feel this too. But I, I want you to think of it like this. Time is not your problem. Every single person has the same 24 hours in a day. So one, I want to offer you this. If you have a time management problem, Three steps to help you with that. But really what I want you to do is start taking inventory of your time before we go there. Here are three steps to help you if you feel like you don't have enough time in the day. What can you automate? What can you eliminate? And what can you delegate to others? When I've helped my coaching clients with this who say they have a time management problem, when they take the time to actually take inventory of how they're spending their 24 hours in a day, some of them have taken back 10 plus hours in a week by simply eliminating, automating, and delegating different things from their to-do list. Now, one, you may simply be taking on too much, which creates you know, overwhelm and stress in your brain, which of course is going to keep you in a negative, chaotic space. So once you have eliminated, automated, and delegated things in your life, now it's time, start paying attention. How much time are you scrolling on social media? How much time are you 
Netflixing and chilling. And I think there is nothing wrong with taking time to do things that feel good to you. But if you're numbing out by avoiding, realize you were just pissing away your time. So I highly recommend once you automate, eliminate, and delegate, take inventory of your time. How are you spending your time each day? And what can you do to better organize and live mindfully, intentionally with your time? A big one for you made to start saying no to things that aren't a hell yes. That's how you take your time back. All right, now let's start moving into once you've decluttered your life, you've unsubscribed, you've unfollowed, you're paying attention to your time. Let's get into some positive things to help you become more mindful and intentional with your life. Step number five in this idea of a detox and declutter is to opt outside, get into nature more, find something that you love doing. Now, I live in Colorado. Things that I love to doing by opting outside, going for a hike, paddle boarding, simply walking in nature. Um, This past weekend, I drove up to my favorite place, Grand Lake, and and I just sat and I enjoyed nature and I drove through Rocky Mountain National Park. But on the same idea of opting outside, I want to offer you this. Put your phone on do not disturb. This is one of my most favorite things to do, which helps me focus, um, keeps all distractions at bay. And I actually get a whole lot more done by removing the distractions. Again, the point of getting out in nature, nature naturally is calm, still, peaceful. And that's why we crave going to the beach or going to mountains or going for a run because nature is not struggling. And that is our natural state to thrive, not just survive in this lifetime. So I want you to think of it. What is one thing you could do this week to start getting out in nature more? Maybe it's a morning or an evening stroll. Maybe it is, you know, getting an accountability buddy and and going for daily walks. Maybe it's booking that weekend getaway just for you to go fill up your own cup. But what can you do to start opting outside more and creating that peace and stillness that you seek? Step number six, we've talked a lot about decluttering your mind, but I also want you to think now, what in your environment is it time to let go of? I did Marie Kondo's organization progress, all about sparking joy in my life several years ago. But I want you to think of it like this. Anytime I have coaching clients that feel overwhelmed, stressed out, the first question I ask them is, what does your office look like? What does your desk look like? What does your car look like? Your external environment is a direct reflection of your internal state of being. So if you have a lot of stress and chaos internally, I want you to start paying attention externally in your environment. Where Can you go clean off and organize your desk? Or maybe it's your closet or your kitchen or your car. When you create more organization and flow in your external environment, you are going to feel that internally. On this same note of clearing our external environment, I want you to know through your own personal development journey, people are going to fall away from you. Because here's what happens when you start thinking more positively and you're feeling better inside, you are going to resonate or vibrate with different people. Maybe you've heard this term before, your vibe attracts your tribe. So when you start doing this work on yourself and and thinking mindfully and intentionally and, and clearing up your thoughts and your environment, people will fall away as well. Just understand it's part of the process. I've had, you know, I've stepped away from many social circles in the last few years because they were doing things that I just no longer was interested in, like getting drunk on weekends or gossiping about people. I have found so much peace and solitude by raising my own vibration, and I'm naturally being attracted to and attracting different people and experiences into my life. So that's what I want to offer you for step number six, declutter your environment, which includes your surroundings and the people you're spending time with. Finally, in the seven step process of decluttering your mind and your life, I want to offer you a new habit to bring in. And I want you to think about implementing a daily gratitude practice. This is something I actually learned about. I was in the fourth grade, eight years old, watching Oprah when I was growing up. And I remember Oprah shared the power of a gratitude journal, a daily gratitude practice. I've literally been doing this for the last 30 years. 
Every single night before I go to bed, I think of at least five things from that specific day for which I am grateful. By doing this on its own, it's training your mind to find the good in life. It's training your mind, even if it was an off day or a, quote, bad day. Maybe you're grateful for a bed to sleep in or a roof over your head or the sun shining or a delicious meal. By practicing an attitude of gratitude that changes your your focus, your energy, everything. And actually, by living in the state of gratitude and being grateful, you are a magnetic force drawing more experiences and things to be grateful for in your life. So this idea of detoxing and decluttering your mind and life is about letting go of what's no longer serving you and choosing to find people, habits, experiences, experiences and things that make you feel good in life. Remember, you are the creator of your reality. Thoughts become things. Your state of being, how you are thinking and feeling are leading to the actions and creating every result in your life. So if you're currently sitting in a space and and you want different people, different energy, different health, more money, then you have to understand you have the power to change that. Focus on the controllables, which is you, your daily thoughts, your daily emotions, your daily actions, your environment, and the people you are spending time with. Now, I would love to hear from you. What was your key takeaway, your aha moment? What is the one thing you're going to implement from today's teachings? And I'd love to know, out of those seven steps, which one is going to benefit you the most? Comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you're the first to know when new videos drop and give me a thumbs up. I'll catch you on the next video.